Good afternoon, everybody. In last three classes, we know about the consumer's equilibrium, demand, supply, consumption, how the consumer got this equilibrium through the demand curve, and ordinary utility analysis, and also cardinal utility analysis. So today you study about the producer size, means production size. We know that production means the combination of various inputs. Various inputs or factors of production when combined, then they arise a product or output. With the joint efforts of these inputs like labor, machines, land, raw materials, that output is produced. Normally, production is carried out under condition of variable proportion which means that the rate of input quantity may changeable. Fixed proportion production means that there are only one ratio of inputs that can be used to produce a good. That means, for example, only one driver can work one drop. The ratio is 1 is to 1. The, however, the ratio of land and labor in agriculture can be changed and is thus regarded as variable. In short run, not all inputs are variable, but in case of the long run, all inputs are variable and the ratio of inputs may also changeable. This is the case of technological progress. In the short run, for the purpose of analysis, it is assumed that only one input is variable and all other inputs are fixed. To discuss about the short run, now we the discuss about the concept of these things, total products, average products, and marginal products. And to, the short run products are concerned whether it is a whether it is a graph or mathematical equation gives the total out, output on available with different quantities of the variable inputs. But the capital in which capital is fixed, but labor is a variable input. We discuss this thing about total product, average product and marginal product. We can take a schedule. In that schedule, we find that capital is fixed. And in amount of labor, it's changeable. It is changed to 0 to 10. But when capital is fixed, high, but no labor is used there, the production is also 0. When labor is used for 1 and capital is fixed, 5, then the output is 20. After that, when you increase the product uh, variable, capital, variable input, labor, HDL, then we find that the product is increased, but it, it, it increased a limit at a point. After that, it diminishing in nature. The, in this schedule, we find that at the point of 7, it is increasing level, but after the point when we use eight units of labor, then we find that that is constant means equal to the seventh unit of output. After ninth unit input of labor, nine, nine units of labor is engaged in this sector, then we find that that is decreasing in nature. And in 10 unit also it decreases. These total products are increasing in an increasing manner. After that, it is decreasing or diminishing, increasing but in diminishing manner. Then how we calculate average product? Average product means Q by L, L quantity by L or total output by labor unit. And here we in this find in this column also we find that first average product is increasing in up to the sixth unit of the labor engaged. After that, in seventh unit, it is decreasing. And also marginal product, marginal product, you know that addition of the last total product, it here also, first it is increasing in manner up to the third. 
third unit of the labor and gas after that it is diminishing and it is come to the in the eighth unit it come to the zero and after that it is negative in this case we find that when they are when the marginal product is increasing that time the total product is increasing in increasing rate and after that when marginal in uh, input marginal product is diminishing but it is positive in nature that case the total product is increasing but not in decrease increasing rate but when the marginal product is zero that time average product is highest after that it is diminishing so the average product of an input can be defined as the total output divided by the amount of input used to produce that output so apl equal to q by l apl is average product of labor q total output or total product l amount of labor so the in the marginal what is marginal product the marginal product of an input is the defined the change in total product due to a unit change in the use of input while quantity of other inputs are held constant that means capital is constant in that case also marginal productivity of labor equal to delta q by delta l delta q change in output delta l change in labor input in this Well, in this fifth, in this fifth column, the marginal product of labor is shown. It may be noted that it is, it is the, with the relation of the average product, it is increased as initially and then falls and finally becomes negative. In the the marginal product of labor becomes negative when labor input exceeds eight units. This happens when the variable input is used too intensely with the fixed input. The marginal product is greater than average product when average product is rising. Equals to average product when average product equals to average product when average product is at maximum, and less than average product when average product is falling. the there is relation between marginal product and average product so then this schedule can be we present in a diagrammatically we are we find the average product curve marginal product curve and total product curve in the diagram page number 147 you see a diagram here you see that increases at an increasing rate up to point e and as more labor is used here the point e where total product stops increasing at an increasing rate and begins increasing at a decreasing rate it is this point e is called as point of inflection total product reaches at maximum at 224 units when seven units units seven units of labor engage in the production sector the use of an additional unit of labor input at this stage does not lead to any increase in total product beyond this point use of labor input results in falling the total production the the total product that portion of total production curve pp shown is there in the dashed in the dotted line which means that the output as a result of increase in employment of labor in when a labor input is expanded beyond the input eight units output falls down which means that production is not technically efficient and thus that is not a part of the production concern me, so they, yes ma'am one question yes uh we are seeing that with the increase in amount of labor total product also increases at a certain point but what is the reason of uh, its declination if we increase the amount of labor here you see the total product is increased 
certain limit then it is diminishing okay ma'am what is the reason of that diminishing point oh now capital is fixed okay if you use double labor then suppose there is a example of agriculture sector a, a lim, after a limit we know that we have technology in which we cannot increase the fertility of land for that after that point if you double the labor to we uh, suppose we find that if we double the labor we think that the production is uh, double that is not possible at that time the additional producer does not want to produce much more in that case like that in in this sector as a sector also when input labor units are increased that time the production is not increased as much as much as the labor so that at the same rational labor rational producer does not want to produce any more okay mom at uh, even if we are further increasing the uh, labor the total products produced should be 224 i am talking about diagram 7.1 okay so even if we increase at least the highest which it has reached then 10 amount of labor can also produce that much amount but why the labor uh, but why is it uh, producing less because here the the cost is marginal cost is more at that case marginal product is less For which average product is decreased also. At that time, if total product, we know that total product is increasing in nature. But as usual, average product is decreasing in nature. At that time, the cost is much more than the uh, price. For that, it the rational producer stop at that time, at that point. Clear? Okay. okay. Clear? Yes, ma'am. In the diagram, we see the in see the we see that in the point of E, the total product increase in increasing rate. So this point is called call an inflection point. But the portion of total product can be shown by dash line after its unit of the labor. It shows the dash line because. after that it is diminishing total product is increasing but in diminishing rate that means the production is decreasing and that time marginal product is zero when marginal product is zero that time total product is highest and at the time when labor input is expanded beyond eight unit output falls which means that production is not technically efficient and it does not take part of the production function so the units of the vertical axis have been changed from output per period of time to output per unit of labor average product and marginal product curves measure the output per unit of labor it may be seen that in the when marginal product is more at the time average product is lying below the marginal product but in the case in it may be noted that at the rate of labor input increases initially the marginal product of labor increases reaches a maximum at three units of labor and then declines at when the after that it declines the marginal product of labor in one in becomes zero eight in at the point of eight units of labor and thereafter turns marginal products as a negative the average product of labor also increases initially and reaches maximum at four units of labor input and then declines then what is the relation between mp and ap product increases average product also increases through so at a rate lower than that of the marginal product it is so that when marginal product starts decline but remains greater than the average product the latter shows a tendency to increase that means there is important that even when marginal product starts decline but remains greater than the average product the let that teach 
so the tendency to increase when the average average product is maximum the marginal product is equal to it and this is because the marginal product curve intersects the average product curve at highest point and beyond this point when the marginal product declines it also pulls the average product product decline in fall down however the rate of decline in the average product is less than that then that then that of the marginal product so marginal product and average product are interrelated initially marginal product increases beyond and but the average product it increases increases but it it is lying below the marginal product when mar average product is highest the uh, marginal product is equal with it intersect with each other then it is in the eighth situation their marginal product is zero but average product is declining at the time then what is the relation between tp and mp curves as long as marginal product curve is positive total product curve will continue to rise they are rising in increasing rate when marginal product is zero that time total curve reaches its highest point it may be when it, in the example we may show it in the that when eighth unit of labor input is employed marginal product of labor becomes zero and total product is maximum thereafter marginal product of labor is negative and total product curve has downward slope which means that total product falls so this is the relationship between mp and tp and so the this concepts average product marginal product and total product which help for the pro conditions of production or for the production sector then marginal product starts decline and this pull down the average product also in the production process generally land capital equipment buildings remain fixed in the short run because these are fixed the fixed equipment fixed capital while quantities of labor and raw materials can be changed we may consider a case where amount of capital is fixed and the quantity of labor is increased in this case initially the marginal product of labor will increase as its amount is increased and the marginal product will also pull up average product with it in this situation total product increases at, at an increasing rate if the variable input labor or labor is increased marginal product stops increasing after a point thereafter the rate of increase of total product also slows to a halt ultimately marginal product turns negative and this causes a fall in total product itself so here marginal product is the base of the average product and total product mainly total product is depend on the marginal product and this changes in since in the short run changes in technology are ruled out that means this that means the technology is constant this statement of trends in marginal product in response to change in quantities of variable factor applied to a given quantity of fixed factor is called law of diminishing return that means it is otherwise known that the law of variable proportion because it it the the proportion in which factors of production are huge we can sum up the law of variable proportion like this way after that edge equal increments of one input are added the inputs of other productive services being held constant beyond a certain point the resulting increment of products will decrease the marginal product will diminish in a 
the marginal product with increment of one input the input product its service and being held constant beyond a certain point the resulting increment of product will decrease that means the marginal product will diminish the means marginal product after initial term marginal product is increasing and after some time it is diminishing in nature the law variable proportion can be easily followed by a schedule or a, a table in this table as the amount of labor employed in this schedule we can find law variable proportion a, beyond a third unit the marginal product is increasing and after that it is diminishing in nature and in the eighth unit it is negative in situation to base up these things in total product also first it three units it is increasing in increasing rate and after that it is increasing but in diminishing rate and after that it is fall down or diminishes in nature and from this table we can know about the law variable proportion initially the increase in out in output takes place on increasing rate because marginal product rises at point e which is the point of inflection the rate of increase in total out product switch from increasing to decreasing because marginal product begins to diminishing and when the amount of labor is further expanded after third units of labor when fourth unit of labor is engaged in the production sector that time total product continues to increase through at a diminishing rate because marginal product and marginal product and average product remain positive but both continue diminish so that so that in the case of the after the when sorry when the marginal product is diminishes that time also total product increasing but in diminishing nature thirdly any it will be counter productive because marginal product is negative which imply imply that total product diminishes at that after seventh point when eighth labor unit of labor is engaged that time participant marginal product product is zero after that total product is fall down at that time total product is highest from properties of this product curve page number 149 we can find there is in the law of variable proportions we, we find there is three stages first is increasing step increasing increasing in, increasing stage then diminishing and then negative stage here first stage what happen in first stage first stage total product is increasing in increasing rate increases in increasing rate then and then rate of increase changes from increasing to diminishing at the stage also it after some time after third third units of labor what happen total product is increasing but in diminishing nature then start the point stage second where at at points f and j continuously increasing at diminishing rate and at that time average product is maximum which is equal to mp and then starts average product start diminishing because of the maximum product now starts diminishing and it becomes a marginal product becomes zero at that case then after third, second stage uh, which is in the diagram at the point k after that stage third which is the total product diminishes and the average product curve is continuously diminishing and the marginal product is negative it is from j and k to right of points j and k 
the three stages of production is described from this way but what is stage 1 stage 1 is the rising is particularly by the rising average product in our case examples stage 1 occurs when labor is employed from 1 to 4 units in stage 1 total product product cost increases at an increasing rate and the marginal product rises it reaches a maximum labor in input of 3 units when fourth unit of labor input is employed diminishing returns set in implying that total product increases at a diminishing rate and marginal product falls in in stage second total product increases at a diminishing rate and that both mp and ap decline mp being below the average ap push later down the right hand boundary of stage second is at maximum total product where marginal product reaches zero that time total product is maximum then stage 3 where marginal product is negative and the continuously average product is declining at the time total product is falling then a economist or a producer want which product is which stage is best for the production the rational producer will operate in stage 2 it is not difficult to follow why products are will not be done in stage 3 in stage 3 less output is produced by using more of the variable input which means that production cost would be higher in stage 3 than they were in stage 2 obviously any rational producer will always avoid to produce in this stage 3 in stage 1 average product of the variable input is increasing therefore if the amount of variable input is double the output more than doubles and the unit of cost of production output decreases if a farm is operating in competitive market it would it would over in the over producing in this stage because by expanding output it reduces the unit cost while the price it receives remains same for each additional unit sold this means that total profit profits increase if production is expanded beyond the region rising average product so in this so that the very initially the variable factor labor is not able to use all the capacity is of the fixed cost in the initial case hence mp and ap remain low for instance for that one worker may not be able to make full use of the of the potential of one hectare plot land but two workers together are in a better position to work on that field hence rise in mp mp as labor increases from 1 to 2 that any rational producer will operate in the second stage only when the law of diminishing marginal return operates this is why the law of variable proportion is also called law of diminishing marginal returns to a factor in this stage the in first stage initially the labor which is the variable factor cannot use its all potential on this on this production sector because of that production is not increasing uh, and when you use in use the uh, more units of labor then you find that the production is increased every production also increase because of that the cost is decreases for that the rational production can arise the revenue from this second stage then this three stages we explain increasing returns the initial stage of production is quantity of the variable factor is increasing so that it is called increasing returns uh, returns in production the classical economist had uh, had had done it is law of increasing returns 
they felt that this law operated only in manufacturing industries. The modern economists believe that this law can operate in any area of economic activity. Marshall operates its increasing returns only in the manufacturing industry, and he believed that when the quantity of labor and the capital employed in the manufacturing industry increased, the scale of production increased. And the, this leads to a better organization of production. According to Marshall, an increase in labor and capital leads to generally to improve organization, which increase the efficiency of the work of labor and capital. Therefore, in those industries which are not engaged in raising raw produce, an increase in labor and capital generally gives a return increase more than in proportion, so that he, take, he believed that the increasing returns to scale is only uh, increasing returns in production only operates in the in manufacturing sector. But John Robinson explained it that it is it is huge in every every sector of every field of economy. According to him, when an increased amount of any factor of production is devoted to a certain use, it is often the case that improvement in organization can be introduced, which will make natural units of the factor more efficient, so that an increase in output does not require a proportionate increase in the physical amount of the labor. So, the increasing returns operates not only in manufacturing industry, but in all productive activities. The tendency of increasing returns come into operation because the efficiency of the factors of production is improved. Then, then example how this operate increasing returns operates. First, optimum combination of factors of production. According to Robinson, full exploitation of some indivisible factors of production is not possible until increased quantity of some other factors of production are employed. Here, indivisibility of factor is the capital. It cannot be, in, cannot be divisible in nature. For that, when the quantities of some factors increase, then the production also increases. Therefore, when the producer engages a small quantity of different factors of production, an optimum proportion among them is not established, and the level of production remains low. When the increase when he increases the quantities of those factors of production which were employed less, less marginal product increases till the point is reached when where the factors are combined in optimum portion. Naturally, at this point, output level is maximum. So, at the initial period uh, period of time, capital cannot use indivisibly in indivisible of factor. The capital cannot use its total potential, so that the, when the uh, raw material or the variable pro variable factors are changed or increased, then the production also increased. At the time, the producer can got optimum proportion. Then large size of fixed factor. When the size of the fixed factor is for, used for producing a given good is very large. While the quantity of the variable factor is, is very small, the level of efficiency remains very low. As more and more quantities of the variable factors are employed, marginal productivity increases, for, for which the, the level of efficiency also increases. As, for example, if only one person is working on 10 hectare plot of land, his productivity will be very low. As the number of workers increases, then the division of labor and specialization also increases because of that production also increases and marginal product will also rise rapidly. Then constant returns to scale. Even if 
if even on continuous rising in the quantity of variable factor of proportion in a farm the marginal product neither increases nor decreases but remains constant the tendency of constant returns, returns is in operation there is no industry in which increase in the quantity of variable factors of production yields constant returns permanently there is not there is not constant returns permanently according to marcel if the actions of the law of increasing and diminishing returns are balanced we have the law of constant returns marcel feels that the operation of the law of constant returns is very limited according to him this law can operate only where when there is a balance between the in tendency of increasing returns and diminishing returns but modern economists regard the area of operation of constant returns as large according to them the tendency of constant returns is generally found to operate before the tendency of diminishing returns set in in the in no field or productive activity increasing returns are obtained forever whether it is agriculture manufacturing industry or any other productive activity the tendency of increasing returns can operate only up to a certain limit after this limit it it is reached to constant returns operate for some time from the point of the view the producer this is an important stage because it exhibits an optimum combi combination of the factors of production in this stage marginal cost is the minimum because the stage of constant returns is reach only when the tendency of increasing returns comes to an end there is no possibility of further decline of marginal cost say and secondly after the stage of constant returns the stage of diminishing returns can sets in therefore the stage of constant return is very significant for the point of view of the producer because of that producer always wants that they produce much more in this constant returns to scale then diminishing returns diminishing returns is happen when the uh, marginal productive is productive is zero the diminishing uh, after ma marginal productive is zero the total product is has the problem of diminishing returns the diminishing return stage is the most important of the three stages of the law of variable proportion the explanation of this law is diminishing return is projected in two ways first the classical economists believe that this law applies only on the agriculture sector marcel has stated that that while the part of which nature plays in production so the tendency of diminishing returns that part which men plays so the tendency of increasing returns modern economics john robinson told said that this economist regard the law of diminishing returns of the far greater applicability than the classical economics according to according to marshall had argued that this law operates only in agriculture therefore he discussed it only in reference to agriculture according to marshall an increase in the capital and labor applied in the cultivation of land causes in general a less than proportionate increase in the amount of produce rate unless it happens to coincide with an improvement in the arts of agriculture that means when land is kept fixed in agriculture while the quantity of labor and capital applied on that land is increased total production increase but not in the same proportion as the factors of production are increased so that the increment in production and the increment of increment increment of the factors is not in same proportion it increases but in a lesser proportion that means here the agriculture analyst has the problem due to this region agriculturists do not consider it profitable to continuously increase the application of other factors of a production on their fixed plots of land then here 
learned they know from their experience that they are is so improvement in the agricultural techniques increased application of labor and capital on a fixed quantity of land leads to a situation of continuously declining marginal product due to this thing the marshall marshall had marshall had accepted two limitations of limitation of the, of its diminishing returns for in agriculture so that marshall's marshall's theory of law of diminishing returns is criticized and what is this the law generally operates in agriculture marshall believed that this law is operate only in the on the agriculture sector but in some cases when the agriculture apply the first unit of labor and capital on a fixed plot of land the fertility of the soil is not properly exploited then what happen the level of production remains low when the second unit of labor second unit of labor and capital is applied output increases in a greater proportion however this tendency does not remain for long because the agriculture is soon finds that additional units of labor and capital start yielding a lower and lower marginal product marshall was was because of this reason marshall was careful in pointing out that the law of diminishing returns operates generally in agriculture and how about in certain exceptional case it may not operate there should second there should be no improvement in agriculture techniques the law of diminishing marginal diminishing returns operates only if there is no improvement in agricultural techniques if that means the law is static agriculture if the agriculture is able to expand a irrigation facility on his land make better seeds and the better implements and more fertilizers then participant then scientific automatically the operation of this law is called generally an improvement in agriculture technique techniques leads to more than proportionate increase in output corresponding to an increase in labor and capital as against the view of marshall some modern economists criticize it and according to them robinson presented this law in general fashion according to robinson the law of diminishing returns as it is easily formulated with fixed amount of any one factor of production successive increasing the amount of other factors will after a point give a diminishing marginal increment of the product from this definition it is clear that this law as a universal value does not restrict it restrict its application only on the agricultural sector according to this law according to her this law operates in all branches of productive activity and the principal reason behind the operation of this law is that the optimum operation between different factors of production breaks down sooner or later the law of diminishing returns is a logical necessity when in any productive activity the quantity of the variable factors of production employed with given quantity of fixed factor of production is increased the law of diminishing returns set in after the point of optimum proportion has been reached then initially application of variable factors was sub optimal given the size of fixed factor later the expansion of in use of variable factors due to sub optimality of different kind another important reason for the op operation of the law of diminishing returns is that one factor of production is used in a fixed quantity and had all the factors of production been available in the abundance and had it been possible to increase their use in production to all conceivable limits the law of diminishing returns would not operate however all factors of production land labor capital enterprise organize extra are scarce and often the supply of one thing is taken to be fixed in this factor that results in diminishing returns
so if the law of diminishing returns is applied by by marshall who who is a who was a classical economist and the john robinson who is a modern economist where is marshall said that it is only useful in the agriculture sector or it is applied on the agriculture sector because agriculture sector after some time it gives the constant returns and it is not profitable to increase the variables but robinson stated that it is used on all the economic activity of the economic sector all the sectors then this was the concept of law of variable proportion where we discuss the three stages among these three stages the produce a rational producer use the second stage to produce the thing produce its continuous production then production function the theory of production begins with some prior knowledge of technical or engineering information the level of production depends on technical condition not by the economist if there is an improvement in the technique of production increase output output can be obtained even with the same quantity of factors however at a given point of time there is only one maximum level of output that can be obtained with a given combination of factors production the technical law which express the relation between factor inputs in terms of production function the production function describes the law of the law of production that teach the transformation of factor inputs into product outputs at any particular period of time the, further the production function includes only the technically efficient methods of production this is because no rational in so production function describes the laws of production the that is the transformation of factor inputs into outputs any particular period of time period of time is also given the production function includes on the only the technical efficient methods of production because a rational producer always use he always use efficient methods to in his production sectors here we may assume that there are two inputs labor and capital and the production function is function of labor and capital or quantity or output is function of labor and capital then then which what is the combination and how, how can a producer produce its, its and which two combination how is two goods are taken what amount of the labor what amount of capital is used to the to the for the production it is called isopoint the isopoint when in the consumer section we study about the consumers curve that the independence curve like that in the producer sector production sector for producers we study or we know about the isopoint an isopoint is the locus of all the combination of two factors of production that yield the same level of output in case of the consumer section independence gave the consumer in a in a independence curve all the all the points of combination give him same level of satisfaction like that an isopoint is the locus of all the combinations of two factors of production that yield the same level of output it can be in it can be we we understand with the help of a schedule let us suppose the a farm wants to produce 100 units of commodity x and for that purpose he use he use the six in three process one two three process in that section all the three process yield the same level of satisfaction 
uh, sorry, all levels give the same level of output, that is 100 units, units of X. The first process, the labor unit is less, but capital is huge, much more. So, if the first process is called capital intensive. And then, since we assume sub possibility of factor substitution, we find that there are two more processes available, available to the farm, and in each of them, factor intensities differ. In the third process, the labor is abundance in nature, but capital is less. It is called labor intensive nature. And we can construct an isoquant curve consistently for two factors of production. They are in the one page number 158. A diagram is there. In this diagram, we saw O axis represents labor and O Y axis represents capital. Here, in when the capital is, is used, seven units, labor is two, which is one is capital intensive technique. And but it gives constant output, hundred units of X. Then uh, in the position of in the combination of C, the capital is O three units, sorry, capital is three units and labor is six units. Here labor is more than the capital and this process is labor intensive process and but it also gives the same output 100 units when you had when you graphically join these points a b c b is the mixed uh, mixed mixed factor here labor is four units and capital is also four units here both are equal in the B process. When we join this ABC combination, we get isoquant curve. Then isoquant curve is sloping downward. And this isoquant curve is three types. This, with this, if this curve is convex isoquant. And in this convex isoquant mostly used, and we, we mostly used. The isoquant can assume some other set depending on the degree of the substitutability of factors. The, the two other possible production, production isoquants are linear isoquant and in, input output isoquant. Linear isoquant. In case of perfect substitutability of the factors of production, the isoquant will assume the shape of straight line sloping downwards from left to right. It is in the diagram, it is shown that when quantity of labor is increased, page number 159, the diagram, when quantity of labor is increased, J the quantity of labor is increased by Rs, the quantity of capital can be reduced by Jk to produce a constant output of labor, 50 units of X. Likewise, on increasing the quantity of labor, labor Ht, the capital of labor is, capital of the capital is decreased Kl. And on increasing the quantity of labor by Tu, Quantity of the capital can be reduced by MLM for producing 50 units of X. Here we see that RS equal to HT equal to TU and also JK equal to KL equal to LM. And it is a constant quantity of labor substitute a constant quantity of capital. It implies that a given commodity can be produced by using only labor or only capital or by infinite combinations of labor and capital in the real world of production this seldom happens this linear isoquant is shown rarely therefore a linear downward sloping isoquant can be taken only a exception, exceptional case then input output isoquant when factors of production not substitutes but complementary, technical coefficient are fixed 
the meaning of this statement is the optimum output is obtained only when the factors of production are used in a fixed proportion in this situation if a producer uses one factor of production in excess of of what is required by fixed proportion there will be no increase in output so in the case of complementary factors of production the shape of the isoquant is is right angle like l letter the isoquant is formed by two straight lines one vertical and other is horizontal and these two lines are perpendicular to each other the common point of these lines is convex to the origin this type of isoquant is called leontief isoquant which is named after asli leontief who who was the pioneer of this work a pioneer of this input output analysis in input output isoquant does not imply that by increasing the quantity of the two factors of production labor and capital the output will will, will increase proportionately excuse me ma'am yes ma'am can you explain this one input output the isoquant again isoquant the input output out isoquant again yes input output isoquants when factors of production are not substitutes but complementary technically technical coefficient are fixed that means the optimum output is obtained when only when the factors of production are used in a fixed proportion in this situation if a producer uses one factor of production in excess of what is required by a fixed proportion there will be no increase in output that means if the producer only increase one factor that means output is not increased at that manner because the, both are complementary to each other as capital increase like labor also increase at that same proportion that can the output also increase in the case of complementary of factors production the shape of the isoquant curve is right angle or l shape in this input output model which is founded by found by leontief wasli leontief that here two factors are complementary factors if both the combinations of both the factors can increase the output and this common factor when the perpendicular interest touch touch in a line the the common point of these lines is convex to the origin it implies only that for producing any quantity of commodity capital and labor must be used in a fixed proportion so that slope of isoquant curve is curve is like right angle clear then isoquant map the like independence curve map the isoquant map also give the same thing but here in this map the it is producers map here the right side right words isoquant curves give high level of output and the level of production increase as one moves away from the origin and goes to higher isoquants a complete set of isoquants for the producer is called isoquant map then assumption of isoquants what are the conditions of isoquants first it is generally assumed that there are only two factors factors or inputs of production the geometric exhibition of the concept is easy in eg since we can easily draw a diagram if you if you abandon this assumption and consider four or five factors of production we would not able to make use of the diagrammatical representation and would have to resort to the algebraic method second the second assumption of this isoquant analysis is that the factors of production are divisible into small units and can be used in various proportions then 
technical conditions of production are given and it is not possible to change them at any point of time technical conditions of production given different factors of production are used in the most efficient way if this assumption is abandoned then the any one combination of the factors of production will aid a number of different levels of production of which the highest level of level obtained would be efficient so in the these are four assumption of isoquants then what are the properties of isoquants like we last class we now we read about the we know about the consumers properties consumer curves uh, sorry independence curve properties like the isoquants properties are here we described first isoquants are negatively sloped that means isoquants slope downward from left to right that imply that they are negatively sloped the reason for this characteristic of the isoquant is that when the quantity of one factor is reduced the same level of output can be achieved only when the quantity of the other other is increased that means if capital factor of capital is reduced if one factor means capital is reduced then automatically it take the more additional unit of labor which which give him the same level of output this characteristics of the isoquant assume that in no case marginal productivity of a factor will be negative in a more realistic case when this assumption is drop one may find an isoquant which bends back upon itself or has a positive slope it is a rare case then a higher isoquant retains higher output it in the independent sorry isoquant map we found that rightward rightward uh, isoquant curves give represents larger output that is obtained by using the more factor in the diagram we see that when the factors are increased then the automatically the curve also isoquant curve is also give much more output in the p1 it gives 100 units of output and in p2 it gives it, it produces 200 units of output and two isoquants representing different output levels a higher isoquant uh, imply gives higher amount of output and a lower in, in the isoquant curve giving a lower level of output then third property isoquants never intersect or touch each other i i suppose do not intersect or touch either each other because they represent different levels of output for example if in the diagram 163 page you see it in this diagram p1 intersect p2 at the point of a and p1 the p1 gives 100 units of output and p2 gives uh, produce 200 units of output this inter their intersection means that reach the same in point in the same isoquant curve give him the same level of output but it is not possible so that isoquant never intersect or touch each other then isoquants are convex to the origin in most production process the factors of production have substitutability often labor can be substituted for capital and capital can be substituted to labor so that the rate at which one factor of production is substituted for the other in production process that is called the marginal rate of technical substitution that is hall that means when one factor of labor each one one factor of capital is reduced is substituted the one more additional unit of labor is engaged in the product production sector and this technique when this substituted for the for one one factor to other is 
in a production substituted in the production sector that is called marginal rate of technical technical substitution then marginal technical rate of technical substitution of factor l for factor k is the i quantity of k that is to be reduced on increasing the quantity of l by one unit for keeping the output level unchanged uh, output is output is unchanged but the k, k quantity of k is reduced but quantity of l level is increased then can you find the the same level of output the isotons are convex to the origin because the marginal rate of technical substitution tends to fall let take a example why this happens with the why this happen here the isotope curve, curve is p suppose that the producer is at point a of the curve the meaning of this that the, he uses o j amount of capital and o r amount of labor units to get 100 units of output assume that one unit of labor o r is r s o r is increased to r s then automatically what happens the capital is also reduced and to k now the combination is c where the output is the capital is k and labor is s when the increases the amount of labor by s t s t then similarly when the increases the amount of labor by s t p u and u v he must reduce the application of capital by k l l m n n it is clear from the diagram that j k is more j k is more than k l and k l is more than l m l m is the more than m n in other words as additional units of labor are employed employed it becomes progressively more and more difficult to substitute labor in place of capital so that lesser and lesser units of capital can be replaced by additional units of labor this means that the marginal rate of technical substitution tends to fall when the quantity of one factor is reduced it becomes necessary to increase the quantity of the other factor increasing rate for example suppose that in a particular productive productive activity two factors of production labor and cap capital are employed when the quantity of labor employed employed is reduced by one unit it is possible to undertake the activity by employing one more unit of capital initially however when one more unit of labor is reduced it might become necessary to compensate this by employing two units of capital as the quantity of labor employed reduces the success to each stage we will require more and more units of capital to compensate for the loss of each additional unit of labor so that capital is so that in in the case of labor labor is increased in equal manner it is equally manner but the capital is reduced as more than less less lesser manner the marginal rate of technical substitution between them would be constant and the ice point will be linear and sloping downwards in the case of perfect production edge are perfect substitutes the marginal rate of substi technical substitution between them would constant and the isotope will be linear and sloping downwards from left to right in the case of this strictly complementary that is zero substitutability of the factors of production the isotope will be right angle and the and other case it is normally the case is in isotope case is convex to the origin so isotope is helpful for the producer to produce the, the 
all the combinations give in the same level of output besides this which is most suitable combination to get opti optimum level of output in this diagram we find that in case of complementary in the case of stick complementary that is the substitutability of the factor c is zero and zero for that the ic point will be right angle or we say we may call it l shape in the linear and right angle ic points are the limiting cases in the production process then production process, production functions generate ic points which are convex to the origin then economic vision of production and rigid lines the now they are assume production function which yield isoforms having all the properties of a normal isoform except that they are not negatively slow throughout that means they have positively sloped segments and the production function is depicted in the form of a set of isoforms which have positively sloped segments this is described in the one page number 166 diagram where the isoforms is positively slow we know that in negatively slope the isoforms is sloping downward to the right but in negatively slope isoforms it is upward to the right suppose isoform p3 in the diagram isoform p3 ab segment of this isoform have a negative slope beyond points a and b this isoform is positively slope similarly other isoforms have the points where they bend back upon themselves implying that they become positively slope the lines ok and ol joining these points are called rigid lines when ok and ol joining are called rigid lines they form the boundaries for the economic regions of production suppose the output represented by i second is p3 by i second p3 to be is to be produced for producing this quantity a minimum of ok ok to amount of capital is required because any smaller amount will not allow the producer to attain the p3 level of output with a ok to level of output the ol2 amount of labor must be employed in case of in case the producer uses an amount of labor less than ol2 together with ok2 amount of capital his output level would be lower than the one represented by i second p3 this is quite normal because huge of inputs in smaller amounts would give a smaller output but combining labor input in an amount larger than ol2 with ok2 amount of capital would also result in output smaller than that is represented by the i second p3 in order to maintain the p3 level of output with a large labor input capital input capital input also in a large amount has to be used this is something which no rational producer will attempt because it involves an economy an economy of resources because the this economic resources are used used by this that, that is an economically which which do not give the profitable result point b on the isoform p3 represent the in representing the intensive margin for labor because an increase in the amount of labor input beyond ol2 with a fixed amount of capital input ok2 does not increase the output level at this point marginal product of labor is zero 
and that the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor per capital is zero. This implies that the point B, labor has been substituted per capital to the maximum extent, that to the right of rigid line OL. Then have stage three for labor, so that and beyond OL to labor, the labor is not used. Similarly, producing P three level of output, a minimum of, minimum of OL one amount of labor input is required. A smaller amount of labor input will not allow the producer to attain P three level of output with O. Output with OL1 amount of labor, OK amount of capital must be used in addition to capital input beyond OQ1 would not increase output. The point represents intensively mar intensive margin for capital because an increase in the amount of capital input beyond OK1 with fixed labor input and of OL1 does not argument output at point A on P3. Capital has been substituted for labor to the maximum extent. Thus, above rigid line OK, we have stage 3 for capital. The marginal rate of technical substitution of capital for labor is zero, which means that the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital is infinite or undefined. So, the combination of labor and capital inputs comprising, comprising the area between rigid lines OK and OL constitute the general stage 2 of production for both resources. These are the combinations that are relevant for production decisions. Then, the optimum combination of factors where a producer got equilibrium. A producer may attempt maximization of output subject to a given cost of alternatively. He may seek to minimize cost subject to a given level of out output. In both cases, for choosing optimum quantity of two inputs, labor and capital, he must consider their physical productivity as well as their prices. While isoquants depend on the productivity productivity of the inputs, their prices are shown by the isocost line. So the isocost line gives the productivity or prices of the goods. And isocost line represents various combinations of inputs that may be purchased for a given amount of expenditure. That is the produce, producer's budget. The producer has to purchase factors or inputs from the market. And the prices of labor and capital are determined in the market is not our present concerns. Moreover, in the farm is no position to influence the input prices unless it is a monopolist or oligopolist. In other words, prices of labor and capital have to be taken as given by the farm operating in a competitive factor of market. Suppose the firm's total cost outlay on labor and capital is 1000. The firm is free to spend this entire amount on labor and capital, or it may spend it on a combination of both labor and capital. Now, in the, in the page, on the page 168, in the diagram, we saw this. We have shown that if the firm chooses to spend the entire amount of rupees 1000 on labor input, it can employ OL2 amount of labor. And if the entire amount is to spend on capital, it can get OK2 amount of capital. The straight line K2L2 is an isocost line, represents all the combinations capital and labor which the firm can obtain for rupees 1000. The length of OL2 is twice the length of OK2, which means that the price of unit of labor is half that of unit of capital. The slope of the line K2L2 shows the ratio of input prices. 
so that the slope of an isosceles line is W by R, which is the ratio of the price of labor wage to the price of capital rent. When X axis denotes labor input and Y denotes capital input, then in the isosceles prices of in inputs and prices remain the same no matter how much quantity of these inputs the firm buys. So the slope of the isosceles equal to delta k, k by delta l or expenditure by by a r expenditure by w equal to w by r this property is similar with the uh, similar of the budget line of the consumer there is important difference between the between iso post line and budget line is that consumer's budget is invariably fixed he has a single budget line but in the case of the Isopost line, the, this different, the firm generally has no such constants and that has more, much more one isopost line. There is more than one isopost line. And isopost line is further to the right reflects higher cost. The one closer to the origin reflects lower cost. The higher are, the right side is are give a higher cost and the, the the and the replace then closer to the origin is the lower cost. Then a rational producer is how it how it maximize a rational producer is always maximize output for a given cost. So he may attempt to minimize cost subject to a given level of output. He always wants the how to minimize the cost. So that a producer maximizes output for a given cost. Suppose the producer's cost outlay is C, and the prices of capital and labor are R and W respectively. Subject to these cost conditions, the producer would attempt to attain the maximum output level. This one is described on the diagram, one, page number 169. In this diagram, we find that in the OX axis represents labor or input prices of W and OY is the represents capital or the input price of R. In the in P3, it may be noted that the P3 level of level of output is not possible because the available factors resources by ISO first are insufficient to reach that level of output. So, in any output level between the P1 and P2, it's, it's possible. Then the ISO first line KL intersect the ISO point line P2 at the point of S and the ISO point P1 also intersect, intersect the ISO post line at the T and R. Any output level beyond ISO post line KL is not attainable because the producer can attain any output level in the region K beyond the KL O beyond OKL that would not require all the resources uh, that are available producer for the post outlay. And the full resources are not full, the resources are not fully utilized. For that he got he does not got the maximum output. Therefore, in the case of a given post, the pro, the producer's attempt would be reached the ISO point, which represents the maximum level of output. The production can operate at point at point S. S is the higher level. S is the the higher level of combination between KL and P2. P2 is the higher level ISO point line which intersects the ISO post line KL at point S. At point S, the combination labor and capital available for the same post and enables the producer to reach ISO point P2, which represents an output level higher than the P1. Since at point S on ISO point P2 is just tangent to ISO post line, 
a lesser output is not efficient because production can be raised without incurring additional costs. Hence, the optimal combination of factors of production, capital and labor is OK2 of capital plus OL2 of labor. As it is enables the producer to reach the highest level of production possible given the cost conditions. At the same time, the region that lies behind it must be followed carefully. Let us suppose that the producer wishes to produce a point P. The marginal rate of technical substitution of labor per capital indicated by the slope of tangent AB at point P is relatively high. Suppose delta T is equal to 3 and delta L is equal to 1. Thus, the slope of tangent AB is 3 to 1, which implies that at point T, one unit of labor can replace three units of capital. However, the relative capital price indicated by the slope of KL is less than the 0 0.7 is to 1, which means that the cost of one unit of labor is the same as the cost of 0 0.7 unit of capital. Therefore, it would be rational on the part of producer that the substitutes labor per capital so long as the marginal rate of substitution of labor per capital is not equal to the factor price ratio. So that the ratio of the price of labor to the price of capital at point R, the opposite situation prevails because the marginal rate of technical substitution is less than the factor price ratio. So, so in that case, the producer is not rational to produce at the P or R level. So the producer is optimum in the position or producer equilibrium is established at the, at, at the point of S where OK2 and OL2, OK2 capital and OL2 labor is engaged beyond its post line, isopost line KL. So the producer maximizes output for a given post only when the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital equal to the ratio of the price of labor to the capital. That means MRPS LK equal to W by R. Means marginal productivity of labor by marginal productivity of capital. Then if the producer seeks to minimize the cost of producing a given amount of output rather than maximizing output for stipulated cost, the condition of this of his equilibrium remains formally the same. That is, the marginal rate of technical substitution must be equal to the factor ratio. Suppose the this can be easily followed by a graphic. Graphic. We have a single isopost line P, which denotes the desired level of output, but there is a set of isopost line. There are different sets of isopost line, K1, L1, K2, L2, K3, L3. An isopost line closer to the origin indicates lower total cost. Isopost line parallel, isopost line parallel to above the original line that is C, A, more total cost the is then it may be noted that the producer is the producer is beyond the k to l2 isopost line can prepare only e level of output that means he engage ob amount of capital and oa amount of labor and it is p not producible by any factor combination available on this isopost line in the however the p level output can be produced by the factor of commissionation represented by point f and g which are an isopost line k 3 l 3 but alternatively the, the producer can attain the p level output by, by the factor combination represented by the point e It represents relatively lower cost. Therefore, my, by moving either from F to E from or G to E, the producer attains the same output level at a lower cost. The producer does minimize his cost by employing OB amount of capital and 
O amount of labor, which determined the determined by the tangency of the isopoint P with the isopoint line K to L2. Points representing factor combination below E are certainly preferable because they represent lower cost, but they cannot be considered as they cannot help producing the output level represented by the isopoint point P. Points above E represent higher cost, hence point E denotes the least cost combination of the factors, labor and capital, for producing output shown by isopoint P. So that the producer always minimize its make minimize its cost and produce and production is maximized and then for the it choose a point where optimal combination of factors and where he get in the more level of output the optimal combination of factors whether the producer seeks to maximize output for a given cost or he wishes to minimize cost for a for a stipulated output is that where marginal rate of technical substitution and the factor price ratio are equal. The producer is in equilibrium when there is optimal combination of factors are arise. So that consumer always choice that level where cost is minimized and level is um, output level is maximized. Then ex what is expansion pair? Producer expand their outputs both in the long run and in the short run. In the long run, output expands with all factors variable, while in the short run, expansion of output is possible with some factors constant and some factors are variable. In the long run, there is no limitation to expansion of output as all the factors of production are variable. The firm's goal being maximization of its it profits. It seeks to expand output in the optimal way with given factor prices. The optimal expansion path is the locus of the points of tangency of successive ISO cost lines and successive ISO points. Then when ISO points lines and lines and the intersection of ISO point line, ISO cost and ISO points lines, we join, we get the expansion path. Then, this is the initial position of producer equilibrium in the diagram page number 172. Initial, this is the first A where the isopost line K1 L2 is tangent to the isopoint P1. This is the initial position of the producer equilibrium. Then suppose factor prices remain constant, suppose the producer desires to expand output to the level indicated by the isopoint P2. This will cause a shift in the isopost line K1, K2, L2. The new equilibrium point is B, where isopost line, line K2, L2 is tangent in the isopoint line P2. Then further expansion in output to the level corresponding to to the ice point P3, then the uh, ISO post line shift to the K3, L3, and ISO point, point line P3, which tended the point C, which is the equilibrium point. When we connecting all the points of the producer equilibrium A, B, C, we get a curve OE, which is the expansion pair. Since every point of the of the expansion path denotes an equilibrium point of the producer. It, it, it shows that the optimum of combination of factors of production on particular level of output. It may be recalled that each point of producer equilibrium is defined by equality between marginal rate of technical substitution and the factor price ratio, since the latter has been assumed to be remain constant. The former also remains constant. Hence, OE is the ISO clean line along with output expand, which factor prices remains constant. In the case of linear homogeneous production function, the ISO planes are straight lines through the origin, where M marginal rate of technical substitution is zero. 
and optimal expansion path in the short run. In the short run, there is some constant, there, there is some factors are constant, some are variable factors. Labor is one of the variable factors and the producer can expand his output with the help of the increasing the amount of labor along. Then, by the increasing the amount of labor along a straight line parallel to the x-axis which this factor is measured in the diagram one page number one seventy three. The straight line AB indicates the expansion path as the total amount of capital is fixed at OA in the short run. With the prices of the factors of production remaining constant, the farm cannot maximize its profits while it expands its output in the short run on account of the constraint of the fixed amount of capital. So that the, if the equilibrium point is extends from, P, from E to H or I, the, in the short run, the producer cannot produce the level of, in the P2 level of output or P3 level of output because its capital is fixed the optimal expansion path would be OR, where it, where it possible for the firm to increase the quantity of capital. But given the amount of capital, the firm has no choice but no to expand along the straight line AB in the short run. So at that time, it's the in the short run, the producer only can choice the E P1 ISO Point line where he produce optimum optimum producer, so optimum point of producers, and here in this level only say, he produce the level of output, the level of output, and he cannot he does not change its um, level of output in the OR expansion path because of the constant capital. And expansion path in the short run in the case of linear homogeneous production is like a, like A B. Okay, now we complete this thing, all the consumer production sector up with two variable inputs. If there is any doubt. Write down some questions. Some probable questions are there. Write the relationship between MP and AP curves. What is total product and what is marginal product? Explain the three stages of production. And why should a rational producer under competitive conditions produce in stage two? Diagrammatically expand the law of variable proportion. What is production function? What is isopoint and types of isopoints? Explain the properties of isopoints. Ex diagrammatically explain producer's equilibrium or the optimum condition of factors. What is isopost line?
how can we draw expansion path Any doubt? Question that he didn't. Okay, today's class is over. We meet again in next day, tomorrow.